Yes, sir. Okay, just give me a sec. After introduction, I will do a little introduction and then. Yes, so Rishit, over to you. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, and uh, good evening, one and all, and welcome to the uh, VITAP School of Businesses International Industry Guest Lecture Series. And today's topic is uh, creativity and innovation, and what expectations does the industry have from us graduates? Our esteemed guest for this evening is uh, Professor Derek Cheshire, who is an adjunct professor at VIT. Professor Cheshire completed his Bachelor's of Science from the University of St. Andrews in Scotland in the year of 1983 and completed his Master's of Business Administration uh, from the Open University in 2001. He has years of exp experience under his belt, including a managerial role in uh, Motion Media Technology Limited, a fellowship from the Institute of Social Innovation and Creativity and Change, and he's currently the head of Business Solutions which is the leading recruitment service provider. Professor Cheshire, the stage is yours. OK, so Derek, before you start, um, I just want to share one thing on the screen. And Rishit, tell me whether it's uh, visible on the screen or not. Is it visible? Uh, yes, sir. The poster? Yes, sir. OK, so give me a sec before uh, I hand it over to Derek. I just want to people to know. Uh, OK, uh, can you tell me is my presentation on? Uh, yes, sir. OK, so just to uh, add on uh, to Rishit, thanks Rishit for preparing uh, about uh, Derek, sir. Um, I had the fortune of meeting um, Derek and uh, did a lot of work and brought him to VIT Chennai Business School twice as an adjunct faculty professor. And uh, he is the author of a book called Creativity Innovation. And I think so. This is a picture. Derek, do you remember this or? I do. I remember going to <coughs> Microsoft. I, mem I remember going to Microsoft. It was a Friday afternoon. Yeah. And nobody wanted to go to a workshop. And by the time we'd finished, everybody was in the workshop. Yeah, and now both of them are in the US, Microsoft, but in the US, and they have built a big, big, massive uh, own campus in Hyderabad. So the entire Microsoft office from Chennai, which we used to do training, is now shifted to Hyderabad. All of them, or to the own premises. Okay, so that's it. Uh, uh, we were lucky, our students were lucky in Chennai campus, and then twice when um, Derek Sir came and took this amazing course. And uh, could you also start by showing your uh, book, uh, which we used for our students as a textbook, uh, Derek, if you don't mind? There we go. OK. Yes, so Rishit, you can take a pic of that and then. OK, that's your book. Over to you, Derek. Over to you. All right, I'll just Thank put it back on the shelf where it belongs. Thank you so much. Yep. Right, so I should just share. Like we always start presentations or saying, I'll just share my screen, don't we? So I will. Um, At the end, I'll show your website to all so that people know more okay. and they can contact you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have shared the screen. It's up. The case it's for creating. Okay. That, that, that is very good. So yes, when 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 Sam asked me to do this, um, in 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 as as is the way with Sam, I think I, he he's not very specific about he want what he wants because I think he wants lots, but doesn't want to ask for it. But what I'm going to do um, for over the next um, um, hour or so is do three things. First of all, creativity and innovation. Um, I don't want to insult anybody by saying defining what it is but i'm going to i'm i'm going to give you a bit about what it is but more more importantly why um organizations why companies businesses even academic institutions actually need it but also what what organizations need from people and more importantly 
what what they they won't actually say what they need but if you identify what they do need you're in a better position to get in there as well and and also pitfalls and traps there are quite a few pitfalls and traps um oh i forgot to say um the, the sort of personal qualities that people might might need are slightly different from what some of the hr people might actually be telling you so first of all i'm going to put the case for creativity and innovation and because i've haven't started that I'll do, that, that'll happen there yeah so what why on earth do we want this stuff well i i bang the drum all the time saying we get much better ideas we get new solutions in, in, in the world we're in now. If you just do the same as everybody else, um, you're just competing on price and business or school students will be used to um, used to many, many um, authors and books and things telling you that competing on price is not a good strategy. So you need novel solutions, but also to the right problems. Much of the time, we are not actually solving the right problems. So let's solve the right ones with the better solutions. We can, if we use creativity and innovation, we can get there an awful lot faster. And the other thing at the moment um, is the speed of change in the world. I mean, we've just had we've just had COVID, but there are many, many, many other things that are moving faster than they've ever moved before. This is a little exercise that I like to do if, if it's in a workshop i take a while over this and play around but i won't today but that 4.39 quintillion is the volume of the mediterranean sea and lots of us particularly in the uk but lots of people in europe they love to go there on holiday so imagine you're sat on the edge of the sea dipping your toes in the water and somebody along the beach somebody not quite as nice as you are has a liter of seawater containing a billion bacteria they're not very nice bacteria they're deadly bacteria and we don't want them in the water but these bacteria they multi they double in number every minute so my question is is if this evil person threw these bacteria in the water how long would you have in theory before every liter of seawater in the mediterranean was actually infected with these bacteria or you started dying or whatever how long do you think it is 4.39 quintillion liters that's huge and the answer is just under 62 minutes it really doesn't take that long and that's just one indication of what's happening at the moment another thing is Everything is exponential at the moment. Um, those who are in engineering and IT will have heard of Moore's law. It doesn't quite hold anymore, but basically the number of, the Moore's law said that the number of transistors on an integrated circuit would double in number every, every um, two years. So that's 40% a year doubles every two years. And after 10 years, just think. And there is a company that recognized this a company we all, we all know far too well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's Amazon. Amazon realized that although Moore's law didn't hold anymore, roughly speaking, every 10 years, they could either get the same amount of computing power for one hundredth of the price or for the same price, they could get a hundred times the computing power. But they went beyond that. Most companies would increase their R&D budget by, say, 10% a year, 20% a year, and it would be incremental, just like that dotted line at the bottom of the screen there. But what Amazon did was their increase was increased every year. So their, their increase in R&D budget went up pretty much according to something like that yellow line. And then what happens at the end of a prolonged period of time is that the companies who are using that philosophy create a gap between themselves and the rest of the world. And by the time 10 or 15 years has gone by, it's too late to do anything about it. In fact, by 2019, 
Amazon's R&D budget was larger than the entire R&D budget of the United Kingdom government. It's absolutely huge. And, and that's what's happening. There's exponential everywhere where people interact. The interactions are exponential. In biology, the interactions are exponential. In IT, it's exponential and things happening so quickly. And we know how fast COVID came upon us. So these things are happening and we have to be able to react, to anticipate and almost as I like to say, get get off the train tracks before the tr you can even see the train. So we need new new business tools, new techniques, and it's part of creativity and innovation that I'm suggesting is going to help us win the battle. The other thing you need you need to know, and a good a good thing to take into into the world of business and impress potential employees, is Charles Handy's sigmoid curve. Now. He, he defined a very simple model for business life cycle, or just the simple hump, if you effectively, um, up and down. So you can imagine a business starts, it grows, it's, it's in a steady state for a while, it may or may not decline, and, and it might die. Um, and funnily enough, inception, growth, maturity, and decline are the phases that um, he defined. And maturity is where we want to be. But if we're not very good at anticipating change, that's not where we stay. And in fact, the Harvard um, um, Business Review has a couple of really good articles on this. And one of them, it, it, it tells us that if we go past maturity into decline, the chance of us getting back to where we were is 10%. In other words, the chance of us failing is actually 90%. So we want to be able to try and predict these points. We need to be sucking, able to suck in information. But possibly what happens if, is if when we get to that point, we can't stay there forever. So Charles Handy said, well, why not? You can either start up another company like, like that, or you can start off another product line or another service offering if you're not going to create another company and so on. So it goes, it cascades ever upwards, trying not to go past that maturity point. And in fact, business life cycles have changed. And this is something else that you guys will have to get to grips with. Prior to, oh, well, from the Industrial Revolution up to the 1990s, the average length of one of those curves was 75 years. So most people who had come across um, businesses failing or had to do uh, implement some sort of turnaround strategy, they'd never have seen it in their lifetime. 75 years. That's an incredibly long time. People would join um, and leave the company, take their pension without ever having seen a crisis. But don't forget, we're not talking about 75 years. We only talk about half of that because that is roughly speaking where that maturity point is. But even so, 37, 38 years is a huge time. Go on a bit, Liam. You can read the scale, but up to the 1990s, that life cycle was 15 years. So we had seven to eight years before our companies failed. But in 2020, this is, this is the killer. The average life cycle of a business is six years, which means that many businesses, particularly in IT, where things are fast moving, are having to reinvent themselves every three years. So this is why we have to be ready for change. We need to anticipate it. There are lots of ways of doing this, plenty of creative techniques that will help us and just being aware is, is good as well. But we need to be able to anticipate change. We need to be able to design change effectively, and we need to implement it. So lots of our studies at, at, at business schools, at university, whatever, talk about implementing change, but not so much of the anticipation and the design. This is all incredibly important. And you'll, you'll see my email address at the end. 
I've got some fairly useful questionnaires will, which will indicate how good business people or businesses are at each of these three things and where they might need to do some work. The other thing that uh, you might have seen from your studies is, is this. It's effectively a version of the um, innovation adoption curve where we have the innovators at the left-hand side, something comes along, they're the first to in line. The people that want the latest Apple iPhone before it's even been onto the market. The early adopters might get it just after it's been on the market. They'll wait for a, they'll maybe wait for a firmware upgrade just to make sure that you know it's not going to fail. The early majority will will wait till all the re re reviews come out in the papers. They might wait for some second-hand phones, etc., and 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 so on. Now, this applies for for all change. You have these. The, replace the innovators by the people who are willing to change the early adopters by the people who are keen but not not quite as keen as that the laggards are the people who drag this their feet and the thing is we don't actually have to impress all these people or take these people with us that chasm is actually slightly in the wrong place social science tells us that we only need to convince about 20 percent of the population so that's 20% of the public if we're selling goods and services. That's 20% um, of our own workforce if we're trying to implement a change. So just slightly to the right of that chasm, somewhere in the early majority is where we need to be focusing some of our effort. Because the early adopters and the innovators, they're all keen. They're all, they're all on our side. So we need to learn a little bit about change as well. One of the things I talk about is I talk about reinvention as well as innovation, and you 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 might you might hear that you'll hear the term radical and you'll hear the term incremental. Now this is um, borrowed from a lady called Nadia Zexembayeva. I won't attempt to spell her name, but if you look up the Reinvention Society on the internet, you will find um, stuff from her. But basically, the difference between reinvention and innovation and whether it's incremental or radical, in terms of um, exactly what gets what gets done, the behaviours, the attitudes, there is no difference. It's the same behaviours. The only differences are the things that are on these scales. So whether whether stuff is incre if, if stuff is incremental intermediate or radical it's the intensity it's the amount of effort the amount of money the amount of change you put into it and the scope are we changing a subsystem a system or an ecosystem so a subsystem might be part of a computer a system might be our whole network of computers an ecosystem could be the, you know em embracing cloud computing completely um I mean, that's already been done, but that's a, an interesting thing. Electric vehicles are another thing. Do we, do we tinker with current cars? Do we try and put in hybrids? Or do we cha change the whole travel system? So that's the only difference. And in fact, the, those percentages are, the percent is where, are where companies are. And basically, they're up the diagonal. So they're either doing incremental innovation, which is what you might do if you want to upgrade a product, a product or um, some sort of radical innovation if you're, if you're really trying to change the world, a bit like Amazon and their $39 billion R&D budget. So those are the two places that are, that are most common. But it's interesting to look, at, to look at companies to see actually where they are and what they're doing. Now, this is one of the reasons that we need to think slightly differently. When I say creativity, I'm not talking about um, playing with paints, um, you know, creating modern art um, or standing on one leg um, so, uh, with my singing bowl in the forest. 
what we're not wanting to do is keep on doing the same old stuff. And the great quote from Coco Chanel, don't spend time beating on a wall, hoping to transform it into a door. We, ne we, need, to, we need to be able to do something different. So these are the sorts of things that we need to do. I mean, basically, as, as employees of companies, we're all problem solvers. We wouldn't be employed by companies if they didn't have problems. I mean, why else would a company employ us? But the problems are not always obvious. So what could the problem be? What actually is it? We know what the symptom is. You know, our sales are declining. But what's actually the problem? What potential solutions are there? And then which can we actually implement? And if you think about it long enough, you realize that th there's actually four phases here. A divergent phase followed by convergent, followed by divergent and convergent again. This also is important because what, what people tend to do is do the wrong thing at the wrong time. I mean, how many people have been asked by somebody, oh, come into this room, come into this, come into a boardroom, or let's go down to the cafe or whatever and brainstorm something. They don't know what the problem is. They're just trying to find a solution. And, and mud sticks, they might be lucky. But this is the sort of thing that you need, that you need, to, be, need to be wary of. First of all, use the right technique at the right point in time and when you come i mean if you search the, the internet there's hundreds of these creative techniques but if you find one think about it is it divergent is it convergent is it meant for solo working you on your own or is it meant for groups of people so be wary of these things i mean if we had plenty of time or I was teaching you a two-week course on creativity and innovation, we'd practice this, but we can't. So just be wary of these. And if you get hold of the slides, these will give you a, a reminder. But one of the simplest, most powerful creative techniques or alternative thinking techniques we have is simply to ask why. You have to be careful, though. Because if you ask people why repeatedly and they're slightly vulnerable, they can burst into tears or it just annoys some people. But an example I give is of a company who um, the sales are dropping off. And the answer from the people in the boardroom is sack the sales director, get rid of the sales force, replace them. But why are sales dropping off? Well, customers don't like our products. Well, why don't they like our products? Because they're too outdated. Why are they outdated? Because we haven't done any new product development for five years. Why haven't we done any new product development for five years? Well, because the, um, the managing director, the boss, um, he hasn't had any time to... So we get from sack the sales force to the managing director really needs to go on a time management course. Now, this is a very simplistic idea, but by asking why you can get down to the real problem and it, and it works in, in, in fact, depending, depending what course you're doing at, at, at university and you have a, an essay question, asking why is a good way of, of unpacking that as well. I'll have to explain right move in the middle, but this is an example of re reframing, which is just literally thinking about something in a different way. The sketch on the left is basically a representation of a shape, and the shape is is a bit like a almost a bit like a piece of piece of cheese. But if you shine a, if you shine a light on it from different angles, you get different shapes a circle, a triangle, a square. And that is literally just by looking at something from a completely different perspective. So sometimes just changing the way you look at something 
if it's a physical object, walk around it and look at it from a different angle. Right move are uh, um, an estate agents in the UK. Um, and this is just a little reminder. But if you've ever been to look at a house with anybody, um, older people will be more, more used to doing this, but you get the particulars of a house. And if you go as a family, the man probably sees the garage. He's, um, he's probably like Sam. He can tinker with his motorbike in it. He can, um, he can do something like that. He can, he can do, he can put a snooker table in it, stuff like that. The lady of the house, she might be, a, she might be interested in the kitchen or she might not. She might be interested in the sunken bath in the bathroom. And the kids don't care as long as they have a large garden to wander around in and their bedrooms are big enough. But you've all looked at the same thing from a different point of view, not necessarily a physical point of view, but looking at different aspects of the same thing. And if you're also familiar with the Harry Potter books, J.K. Rowling doesn't give us all the detail about absolutely everything. She gives us enough detail for us to hang our own ideas on it. So we're, we're actually telling a version of her story, but it's not the same one that she actually wrote. So reframing can be useful because if it shows us things in a different light, in a different way, we sometimes see solutions that aren't actually obvious at the beginning. Another, another simple example, sometimes we need to generate lots of ideas. Now imagine I'm creating a new television series. And the four things that I, I've, I've fixed, I've decided on that will characterize it are the target audience, its setting, the theme of it, and a suggested title. Now, if I think of 10 things for in each of those categories, 10 target audiences, 10 settings, 10 themes, 10 titles, and then I select four random numbers, one for each column. There's 10,000 possible suggestions there. Now, they're not all going to be that sensible. I mean, girls in a bar, the theme is mystery, and the suggested title is my favorite fruit. That obviously is not right. But that you can suggest something. You can do this anything you like with a product, a service. And I challenge any, any, well, this is where I get myself into trouble, but I challenge any student writing an essay to do something similar, um, to think of a topic for an essay. Um, but again, somebody could, somebody could um, computerize that and do it very, very quickly. But 10,000 possibilities just by coming up with some ideas and throwing some random numbers about. Another idea. I call it list and twist. If you have a product, you have a service. And you want to change it, you want to make it better. Just create a list of things you can do to it and see if they work. So add a step, take something out, make it easier, change the packaging. In fact, I used to work, well, uh, motion media technology was mentioned, we used to make set top boxes. And we, we had problems with with the sales of one particular set top box. The picture was great, but there was a perceived view from customers that the box was not good enough quality. And the reason for this, it simply wasn't heavy enough. So we've got some of those um, uh, stick on weights, these um, self adhesive weights and stuck some in the base of the box. That's all we did and sales improved. So that was make it heavier. You can do all sorts. I, I bumped into uh, a man who had just written a book. Well, it was it was it was a children's gardening book, and he looked at this list and said, "Whoa, that's interesting." Add a smell, and the scratch and sniff gardening book was born. So the, these aren't things that you sit sit down and do. Uh, spend all day every day trying to do it these are things 
that you do on a whim and something hits you and you think, great. Boring, making decisions. But who, act, who actually tries to use any sort of technique for decision making? If in this case, a decision is characterized by risk and impact or maybe cost, high and low in each case, then we, 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 can, we, can plot, we can put decisions in each of those quadrants. Or we could characterize ideas and see which ones are the ones that are worth doing. Just change the axes. All of these things are things that are just slightly different from the mainstream. This is this is another one. This is one of my favorites. I'm sure I'm sure Sam's come across it as well. But brainstorming is deadly boring, and a lot of the time it doesn't work for the reasons that I mentioned earlier. But how about doing doing it this way? Instead of saying how do I, or how how would I make this? worse in fact i did this with students in chennai the last time i was there and we took the idea of a petrol station or a, a gas station depending of your, what you want to call it but imagine your family owns a gas station they run it for years and all of a sudden one of the big companies bp shell they open a brand new station over the other side of the road nice and big nice and clean nice and bright more pumps a nice shop and everyone wants to go there what do you do do you give up or you try something different but if you just try and think what do i do you'll probably try and copy them but if you think how do i make things go as bad as possible how do I sell as little petrol as possible? How do I drive myself to bankruptcy? And even the most positive people will find it easier to generate negative ideas. But even better, the negative people that you study with, that you work with, they can help you. Because they're the people who normally say, no, we can't. We tried that last year. It's too expensive. But it's very, very difficult to be negative about a negative idea. So we just end up with more ideas. And that's how you can generate 20 ideas whilst you're having a cup of coffee. It's called reverse or negative brainstorming. And, and it works a treat. I've seen it also used for behavioral change. But that's probably another story. So how do you get started with all this? Well, first of all, don't be illogical. And I'm not saying that because I love creativity. It is, it is actually illogical to keep being logical. If a business or you are used to doing, stepping through all the, all the things that you can do when you have a problem or you want to take some business action, you step through all the things one at a time until you get to the point where you've tried everything. Then somebody comes along and says, why don't you do, be a little bit creative about generating ideas, creating new products and services? And you say, no. It's actually illogical not to, to do that. If, if you're being logical and you want to step through everything, then why not? And in fact, what you can do to persuade a business to adopt something different is to say, well, actually, this little product or service, we can make it slightly different, but you can still deliver it in using your traditional delivery method. And they like that. It's less risky. But yeah, don't, 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 well, when I say don't be illogical, it's, you need to be illogical because it's illogical to be logical. Know when you need to converge and diverge. That's the key thing. Back to the convergent, divergent thing. We need to, we need to be very clear about when to, when to do that, when to do the generation, when to come up with lots of things, or when we need to focus, when we need to start taking action. 
select the right tool, the right technique, build your own. Some of these things that you that I, I have, some of these things you find on the internet, for instance, they can all be plugged together. You can make your own tools. Recycle your favorites. I mean, I've, I've got 144 techniques in a book and I, I never used all 144. A dozen maybe, but when you get your favorites, stick with them, maybe change them a little, but stick with those. And if you're working with people, keep, as I say, keep your powder dry. If you work with people and say, I'm now going to use a two by two matrix to do some decision making, or I'm going to do some reverse brainstorming, because this is what this silly English guy told me to do over the internet, then they're going to run a mile. But just draw it up on a flip chart, do it, and people go, "Wow, that was good. We ought to try doing that again." So keep your powder. Don't keep your powder dry. Don't tell people what you're doing. Just do it and evolve them. And whatever you do, keep a notebook or a scrapbook close by. I would say keep a um, keep um, a smartphone or something close by, because we all have one near to us, and you can you can make voice notes. But when when the charges run out or what, it, where's your phone? Just keep a small a small notebook. I was going to say I'm, I have got a big pile by the side of the desk, but keep a small notebook and a pen close to you, in your bag, in your pocket. And um, when ideas crop up or problems need to be solved, just jot the information down. This is one of the things that you'll probably be trying to help businesses avoid. Like black hole syndrome. The companies need to innovate because the market says they need to. The market says we want more products. We want something different from you, a lower price. And the companies go, oh, yeah, we can do that. False confidence, they can't. Then they begin to realize and they scramble around. They hiring consultants they take in more staff they take in more money and that doesn't work so they panic and then by that time their competitors have moved on and the market's saying come on we want more stuff from you and you can easily get sucked into in into into the black hole into this cycle spending more and more money instead of getting a return on your investment so this is where companies are liable to be so if you ever go to work for one of these be, be looking at the and anticipating designing and implementing change because where those big um, thunderbolts are a good place is to break the cycle so you need to change something sometimes it's changing management but sometimes processes but this is what's happening in those companies so this is where you need to be this is what you need to understand this is this is a, an equation of my own making, but it was designed in response to people who used to say, "You can't manage what you can't measure." Uh, to some extent, it's true, but um, you know you, you can herd you can herd cats. It just just takes a long time. But this equation is was a way of measuring um, the potential to inno innovate. And it, it just says that our innovation output is a function of creativity, which is coming up with ideas, capturing ideas, um, know-how, which is all the stuff we already know. So that's stuff that's in our heads, stuff that's on computer disks, stuff that's in our libraries. And that little power N, which is raises everything to a power, um, exponential again, funnily enough, and that's the culture, the attitudes and behaviours, the the how we how we work with each other. But all of these things can be measured, so it can be systematic, and you can find your place in that system. But that's the thing to remember: companies are systems. So although you might think you're creative, you might think you're not creative, but you still have a place to uh, a part to play. In these systems, I, I work. I work for a company, a mattress manufacturer in Mexico City, and one guy came up to me and he said, "Yeah, I really love all this creative stuff, 
but unfortunately I work in IT and my boss is the finance director and the, the poor guy's face just hit the floor. And as I explained, well, yeah, your your day-to-day -day function, your the actual position in the company says that you work for the finance director and you're in IT. But it does not mean that you can't come up with ideas or be in the place where ideas are implemented or solve problems. And, and his, his face lit up. So you have to remember that you're working as part of a system and the system and you personally are slightly different. This is one of a series of three slides. I haven't got the other, other two here, but market, market and technology are the two things really that cause us to do what we do. And in quadrant one, we are basically doing incremental change. Q4, uh, it, it's radical change. And if you change things further, it's where I call where the magic happens. It's where the com company is not quite of the future because it's being done now, but the companies who will become more prevalent in the future are operating. Um, companies like Google who got so many ideas that you know, they just can't even evaluate them. But companies with cultures that most of us um, would love to work in that we can't even experience. So market, market and technology are the two things that are causing all this to happen. These were three metaphors that I, I plucked out of the air. I know there are a couple of people on the call who've probably seen these before. But they're easy to remember. It's not, it's not these, these are months, months old. In fact, more than, more than a year old in some cases. It's not, not done just for today. Um, it's not particularly Indian soup, but Jugad and Chai. I use these as metaphors. And the reason is... The company of the future where you guys will have to fit in is going to be flatter, like soup. It might have bits of vegetable and croutons in it, but it will be more like soup. People are going to be valued for different reasons. They're not just going to be promoted to a bigger desk, a bigger office, depending on length of service people's salary, their worth is going to be um, judged by their contribution to, a, to an organization. So you might be a manager and you might be a very good manager. That's, that's great. You'll be rewarded accordingly. But if you don't want to manage and you're ver a very good um, engineer or technician, IT person, then you don't have to get promoted. You'll just be rewarded and we'll communicate with people in that way things will be very flat we won't have hierarchies so the organizational form is a bit more like soup jugad that's a real picture not not faked that is actually a man taking a selfie with a pitchfork um, you could only you really could only see that in india but jugad has been was very it was it was a very hot topic for a long time lots of western companies took it on board and then they dropped it and the reason they dropped it was because of, of the hacking aspect of it people didn't the quality wasn't built in but what it did have was curiosity People wondered if they could. The attitude, the, well, actually, I think I can do that. And the behaviours that need to be, need to exist in order to actually get something done. But where, the, where does the culture come from? The, the consistency, the quality? Well, that's where the chai waller comes in. Um, as Sam will tell you, I'm a great fan of chai, especially chai that comes from... A, from somebody selling it by the side of the road. But you don't get bad chai. They don't, they didn't deliver poor chai because all those customers that file past every day just wouldn't buy from them. But that consistency, that culture, 
it's not written down in the manual. The Chai Waller does not look at his manual before he starts work in the morning and say, this is, I'm going to make a thousand, a thousand chais today. This is how I'm going to do it. He just knows the culture and consistency is there. It's embedded in everything, but it's not written down on pieces of paper to be forgotten. It's actually used. So these are the three metaphors that I, I love to use. Soup, jugan and chai to, to tell us or give us a visualization of organizational form, attitudes and behaviors and the culture and consistency. And the, these are easier for you to remember because you guys hopefully in a couple of years are actually going to going to be in a company like that and just as an an, an example of a company that um the sort the sorts of companies that we want that we need this is actually an example from um the 90s and um, japan railways east was um as, as you know they have their famous bullet trains and japan railways east was laying lots of track and Japan is very mountainous and they were tunneling underneath the mountain. And as you imagine, um, the mountains in Japan are quite, quite high, um, covered in snow and they're granite. So the snow, when it melts, it trickles through. So if you bore a railway tunnel through it, then the tunnel starts filling up with water. And they were very, very keen to um, pump this water out as you would imagine. But one day an engineer decide to, decided to taste it. And he thought, this is good. And he went back to the project office and said, we ought to bottle this. We don't want to be pumping it away and throwing it away. I mean, this is, this is water that's been filtered through volcanic rock for hundreds, if not thousands of years. It was as pure as anything. So that's what they did. They didn't throw it away. They just bottled it. And within a few years, Oshimizu bottled water was making them over $45 million a year. And they had they had vending machines on all their railway railway stations. And that's all because one chap was curious, but he went to some people in his organization who said, wow, that's interesting. They didn't say, go away, don't be stupid. They ran with it. So the the, the the culture the attitudes and the quality and consistency that i talked about with those those metaphors were all there and this can happen everywhere not just oshimizu bottled water this could happen in indian railways it could happen anywhere if you have the right sort of people doing the right sort of things so i try to try to explain what what creativity and innovation is, what it does, and hopefully to enthuse you about its use. And the reason for doing that is so that you can come to understand what industry might actually expect from people. An industry wants solutions to problems. That's what it wants. It's not going to employ you otherwise. They're not going to give you money just to turn up. Industry expects curiosity. They want you to be able to find out about things, do research. Flexibility and tolerance of ambiguity. Not everything is going to be cast in stone anymore. You might have to be juggling a few balls in the air for several months before you actually get something done on a, on a, on a project. Communication is going to be absolutely key. If you're living in the world of soup, you need to be able to talk to all the other components of the soup. And you will need a broad range of skills. In fact, biology is one of the most in-demand skills, biosciences at the moment. Not because biosciences itself is incredibly important, it is, but because it adds into other things. Bio, uh, bio oh, I can't remember what they call it. Um, there's, there's nanobots things now, um, I, I, IT and um, technology and engineering rather have combined. They're using biological ideas for computing. But a broad range of skills, no, have a core skill or two, definitely. But read widely and have a broad range of skills. 
And the one thing I didn't have probably enough enough of when I was working was humility. It's it's great to have all these skills, but sometimes you just have to say yes, sir, when the boss says something. You you just uh, fight fight your battles, um, and um, yeah, fight fight another day. So a little a little humility is um, important. And when, 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 and when you can do all that, just make it automatic. The businesses need to make it automatic. You need to make it automatic so that you don't have to think about it and you can focus on all of the other things that you need to do. So there we go. There we go. I've rattled through that. Hopefully there's some, well, there's some time for questions, but we have, have got on a bit. So uh, if anybody wants to very quickly take those details down, if they want, I don't know, PDF version of the slides or the questionnaires to do with anticipating designing change, email me, let me know, and I'll, I'll let you, I'll, I'll send them your way. So I shall stop sharing and see if anybody has any questions or if everybody was too bamboozled. Okay. I have so, stopped sharing, haven't I? Yeah, I think it's, it's... Yeah, okay, that's good. Thanks. I'll move, uh, you, to, I'll move yeah. you to my main screen then. Sure, yeah. Anybody would like to just unmute and ask questions quick? You can unmute yourself and talk to sir. Yeah, Richard, be loud and uh, talk to Derek, sir. Um, uh, it's... I'm not sure if it's a it's an on-point question, but will a business fail if there is a lack of creativity in its workforce? Um, a short answer. The answer I'd like to give is it depends, and then then I'll tell you tell you why. And but the short answer is is yes, even for a company that's not necessarily on the face of it very creative or very innovative products and services the thing is you have to remember that the company is made up of different things there's the products and services that they offer and there's the processes which they use internally now even if those even if their products and services are still in demand for a reasonable time then their working practices will, will need changing as well so they'll need a little bit of something to change but businesses all change at different rates. They all have a need to change at different rates. But ultimately, if any business is not keeping up with what's happening in the world, then it, it will fail. It just may take a time. And the problem is that once you get to that decline phase, then you have a only a 10% chance of, of recovering. Uh, and uh, one last question, um, and this is like a two-sided question, if you will. How would you know if a person that you're about to hire is creative, mm -hmm. and how would you be able to show to the person who's about to hire you that you're creative? Right. Okay. So if you if if you are recruiting, well, there's 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 a number of ways. Um, you can, unfortunately, some of the methods that have been used in the past are very silly i mean we we've all been to these assessment centers and things like that where they try and instead of asking you questions they make you do things and in order to test um creativity they they've made you do very silly things and it, it's pretty pointless but, but what you actually have to think about is what is it you're trying to find out are you trying to are you trying to test somebody try, try and find or rather assess say the solution to a problem they come up with or are you trying to assess the way they try and solve problems so if you were talking to some people who you're looking at recruiting potentially just just give them a a, a, a very very difficult problem that they're probably not going to solve and look at how they go about trying to solve it 
how do they try how do they analyze the problem how do they um come up with ideas and th those are the things that are going to tell you what you want to know not the fact that they can stand on a chair with a banana in their ear whilst making cottage cheese sculptures that that's not actually going to help you at all so yeah give give them give them a problem and watch watch how it's solved is, is the answer to that but how can you show people that you're creative that that can be a little difficult because again you what you actually need to be able to do really is take is take over the conversation and have some have some case studies um i mean you 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 can fly fly by the seat of your pants in, in an interview situation but if you have you don't want to be going um uh, mm, well yeah i remember this have some case studies some things that you that you've done which clearly demonstrate um your your creativity you could go a step further it depends where you're going to try and impress somebody but instead of giving giving them your cv or sending a cv in a box if you're if you were really really keen and um trying to um trying to trying to uh, wow them why not send them a video cv a musical cv a colorful cv it might not go down everywhere particularly in india but if you're wanting to demonstrate something and you're wanting to catch someone's attention then you have to make it stand out um but yeah but yeah you, you could have a you could have a whole workshop on on just doing these sorts of things to be perfectly honest uh, and um, my last question, um, I probably oh, you're getting your money's to... worth, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's just um, when you were speaking, like all of these questions came at once and I didn't want to bother you mid the lecture. Well, that's um, fine. At least at uh, least you're listening. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, last question is, how do you know what kind of creativity you have? Like you mentioned that there is one where you find problems and one where you solve problems. How do you know beforehand that which type of creativity you have? Divergent, divergent convert. Okay. Derek, the question is about divergent convert. Diverging and, and converging. Well, it's it, we just have apply apply common sense. Really, if you're if you don't know what what your what your problem is, then you, you, then you need to generate all the possibilities of well, what is this problem? And so that that is a period of um, divergent thinking. But then, if once you've once you've got all these ideas, and you need to think, well, th which is the one? Which is the real one that is the problem here? Then that is a convergent phase for which you'll use a convergent technique. Um, uh, you just have to have to think: it, Are you creating many things, or are you trying to focus on one thing? And that's what tells you whether it's convergent or divergent. So, like self-reflection, then, like you need to think to yourself whether you have um, whether uh, the problems you're coming up with are in multiple, like number, multiple numbers of problems, or you're uh, focusing on one problem. Indeed, if you if you've got if you've got if you've already got lots of things, then the next thing you probably want to do is is focus on one. But if you've got what if you think you've got one problem, um, I mean, you don't always do this. I mean, sometimes it, things are so simple you you just wouldn't do it. But the 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 silly example I gave up of uh, sacking the sales manager, you know, if you hadn't gone to that another phase of digging in and finding out what the problems could be you could have sacked the sales manager for no good reason at all uh, understood sir thank you sir, what, uh, good evening sir i'm ajay yes sir, can ajay, we can hear you, hear you. Yeah. yes you are sir, how do you conclude a person who is finding the problem how you conclude him as a creative person? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't, didn't hear the question too well. Ajay, can you repeat slowly? Yeah, yes. 
how you conclude a person who is finding the problem how he is a creative person how you conclude them direct uh, can i rephrase it um yes please do yeah uh, ajay his name is ajay ajay says so for uh, any person who is finding out a problem he is bringing a problem not the mm-hmm. solution how do you find out that he is creative yeah is it double it's what triple it's what question <laughs> the the answer is <laughs> that's easy because everybody's creative even if they don't know it yeah it's the it it's 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 the type it's the sort of type of creativity if you like but every everyone is creative um if you don't believe if you don't if you don't believe you're creative think of the last time you told a story about why you were why you were playing out late with your friends when your parents told you to be in at seven o'clock you told a story you're creative when was the last when was the last time uh well for those for those of you who might be married that's not many of you i hope not yet but but i'm with sam and raj kumar there have probably told a little little white lie about something they should have brought home they should have gone to the shops on the way home and didn't there's probably a good reason why they didn't so every everybody can tell stories but yeah but some but people are everyone why don't you hire everyone why don't you hire everyone well some people are a little bit the problem the problem with with hiring lots of incredibly creative people well actually let's rephrase this i mentioned the fact that there although we we are individuals there is a system and people still have to carry out those functions so you don't want everybody sitting there in sunglasses and colorful shorts and having you know iced lattes all day with their feet stuck up on the desk um one or two of them are great the bosses have to realize that some people do do that and be able to manage them but you but you still need some slightly less creative people if you've done anything like um what was it is it belbin's team theory or something you realize that you do have to have the plant you have to have the completer finisher you have to have people who would do do some of this um i'm i'm not the most radical creative person in the world but i hate documents so i would need a completer finisher in order to to help me do things so yes you wouldn't hire everybody because they you need different types of people but everybody has a spark of creativity and everybody can be used even the slightly less exciting administrator who does who does typing you could employ a slightly more creative administrator that organizes their time in a better way gets it done quicker and more efficiently so not everything is radical but we are all creative and we wouldn't want to hire everybody is the long-winded answer good uh can okay. i add in Sir. direct to this question to ajay can i add on yes you feel free okay so i don't know whether people will agree or not um the creator rajkumar sir can tell me if i'm okay the creator created you to be creative that's, not an- to- that's another one of your sayings isn't it sam <laughs> <laughs> not to be duplicative not to be photocopy all right yeah. the creator created you to be creative in your own way number 1 number 2 ajay's question is very valid why not everybody so my cross question is why not everybody becomes a prime minister why not everybody become president why not everybody becomes a defense minister so here giving example is very easy my dear friend living with example is the best thing which is so difficult for many so many people say this that i'll do this but giving example is very easy can you live by example by doing something little bit different uh that's a big question and uh, i don't think all this comes in one day it takes 
ages for people to get in. But uh, the most innovative person shines. If you're not creative, it doesn't matter. You can still live. But there's always a growth difference between your own batch. So let me give you an example. All of you will pass up in the same one year. Same time. Same time placements. But few will become multi billionaires soon and few won't become. Right? Each of you, your talents, your uh, work and uh, it, it matters a lot. But the creative person, it doesn't matter whether it is a topper or a non topper. They will outshine many people and go off. And that's where the matrix, um, you know, we learned from Derek way back. I think so. Derek, when was the first time we met? Which year? We, oh. 2013. Um, twi- uh, in, in, in person, 2016, but we, 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 we were got in touch the year before that, 2015. 2015, 2015 yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, Ajay, and next question, anyone? Sir. Uh, okay, sir. Then what I is think the, I think the other thing about employing. Every, oh, sorry, I was talking over who was saying the next question. Just a quick point I wanted to make there about um, r- roughly um, attached to the um, not employing everyone is it happens mm. a lot, particularly in, in, in India, I've noticed, but it happens a lot worldwide is people mm. love best practice. And mm. And people tend to copy a lot, and okay. I, I, I know, I know um, um, uh, my friend Raj Kumar, who's sitting there, heard me talk about this not that long ago. That there is a there is a there is um, a, a temptation to adopt best practice or adopt the very latest of everything, just because it's the latest. But these things are just technology; they're tools. It's the it's the it's the creativity that sets them apart, a bit like the man uh, in Japanese railways. Yeah, he just had that spark of creativity, but he wasn't he wasn't like every other engineer they had. He was just a little bit different, <coughs> and then the company knew what to do with it. So yes, we will all be different, and the reason why we're not all multimillionaires is. Some of us don't want to be multimillionaires, and and, and some do. Um, but yeah, making m- focusing on difference is what is 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 a good thing to do. So whether you're whether you're going to a job interview, whether you're um, doing an assignment or making an essay, if you can make make yourself stick out in the right sort of way, then it will be good. Derek, there's a personal message when somebody said because you wrote a book on creativity and innovation. Yes. What's the yes. difference between creativity and innovation? Why both are they synonyms? Are they different? No. Um, yeah. People, can a student can... be creative and can a student be innovative at the same time? Or are they both different? I think they, so that what, one, the one is contained within the other. If you go back to the innovation equation, um, that's why I created it, is to show that innovation contains creativity and knowledge. Yeah. And if you if you if you change the balance of those two things, you get different types of innovation. So if you have very little creativity and you have lots of knowledge at your disposal, what mm. will happen is you'll probably get incremental innovation. If you have lots of creativity and very little knowledge, you're, you, you might as well play in a children's ball pit or a sand pit. You're, you're at play. If you balance those two, then you're going to have the uh, you'll be able to cap, create ideas, capture ideas and use them. And when, when I talk about um, knowledge and know how that isn't just, you know, things, things that are just ideas about new products or services. That captures, um, if we're talking about factories, that captures our um, our knowledge of production. So it's very important to have that know-how about, say, a production line as well. Mm. So you need a balance of the two, and 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 you are go one way or the other depending on how those things are balanced, and then depending on that variable in the culture, the attitude of management, attitude to risk, 
um, availability of finance, that determines how well you do because it's an exponential thing. And Derek, in the function formula, I think so the T is very important, the timing. For example, if my students are very creative now on cryptocurrency, on digital cash, on something related to this area now, because the time is now. Mm. But if you do this after five years, you're, you're out of the picture. So time, anything creative in the right time. Can you be creative what the market needs now? Because it, you have yeah, a it's, yeah, it's yeah, you, it, it, exactly. Time, it has, time, to, it has to be relevant, relevant to the market. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean there's a huge amount going on now. Um, people talk about um, talking about blockchain. Yeah, a huge thing. And and to be to be to be honest, I mean, with uh, um, apologies to any people here who might be IT, I find I find actually find the whole idea of blockchain quite boring. However, what you can do with blockchain is fascinating. It's not just that you know, it's not all, all about sort of crypto mining and stuff like that. Blockchain can be used as, 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 a, as a, in fact, I've, got, I've come across somebody who's using it for supply chains. So in, yeah. in, if, if, you know, if, if containers of containers of say fruit and vegetables leave South America to come to Europe, all the import export documentation can all be taken care of with blockchain. You can use IOT technology to monitor um, temperatures of, sh of shipments, shocks to containers, all sorts of all sorts of things. So what, what these things can be used for? Um, um, I, you know, uh, managing smart cities and all of the, it, it's the uses for these things. It's not just the technology itself. So it might be it might be great to um, to do a computer science degree from from BIT and say, yeah, I've been playing with 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 blockchain or IoT. So yeah. who who in a way who cares? What can you use it for? Because, as I said before, it's down to solving problems. What problems are these things going to solve? If they can solve a problem, then they'll be valuable. And for those who want to become multimillionaires, that yeah. is how they'll make their money. See, Derek, I don't know. Can you see the screen? I I will. I, I can, but you're using a green. You're you you're using a, a green screen, and the and it and it vanishes when you hold it up. I will. I will remove that. Can you now? See, I yes. have. I have two sanitizers. I did a small experiment, you know, because as a business faculty, I keep you know doing little experiments. I went to the medical store. This I don't know if you can see the name. Uh, can somebody students tell me whose brand is it? What is the brand? Apollo. Apollo. I'm sorry. Apollo, Apollo. Right. Yeah. But he used all technical words, and then he also says. 99% uh, can you see this yeah so it's it's by apollo now apollo means everybody will know it and the price of this is 250 all right half a you know half liter finally this is another company it says seco s w -E k o same thing you just put hand sanitizer same price 250 both are the same but tell me honestly all the students Packaging is same, bottle is same, and neither Apollo is manufacturing this, neither Seco is manufacturing this. Some third party is doing it, but they're only putting the label and selling. Tell me honestly, which one would you prefer to buy when you see both? Which or one? Generally? I'm sorry? Class, it would be Apollo. So. Apollo. Apollo so. At first class. First class will be Apollo. Yeah. Why, why Apollo came to your mind? Because... There is so much Apollo did as a business from the health care and its branding is there and you, you know it. OK, so. Creativity is not just about product, how you package both are packaged in the similar way. Mm -hmm. Right. And both, if you see properly, they're not manufactured by them. They are manufactured by different, different people. Uh, one is from Gunto district. OK. This Seco, this Seco, all right. I will read. I don't know. Can you?
Is it visible? Yes. yes no. Where is it? US? Guntur District AP. Guntur District AP, sir. Okay. Now, if I take this and go to a very big metro and say, Bhai sahab, you know, very good one, <laughs> they'll say, who made it? Then Guntur, they'll say, please keep it aside. And the same bottle, remove this slip and put this Apollo, people will buy. <laughs> okay, so how we package, I, I showed you two things. Okay, I do a lot of experiments to understand the reality of, you know, creativity in small, small things, you know. Uh, it's not a great thing, but my, my humble suggestion from Derek's session is uh, try smaller things. You know, creativity is not that we need to change the world and like that. But Derek, thank you so much for giving the time, especially now. I, I'm sure it should be oof, how much? 3.15? Yeah, it's not, not as late as where you are. Uh -huh. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, any, any last somebody wants to give? Can we put on the cams and take a quick uh, group pick with Derek quickly? Uh, please put on the cameras quick, 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 quick. And let me remove the spotlight. OK. OK, all of us, are we there in the box now? Yeah, I can see Ajay is setting up. Cool hairstyle. I can see Rishit. Yeah, take, take a print screen, put it on the group. Come on, I, I can, where is? I can't see many people. Ah, Ishishwane, very good. Excuse me, sir, you're uh, on spotlight. Sam, oh. sir, you're on. oh, mine is not remote. Give me a second. Is it gone now, bro? Uh, yeah, <laughs> now it's gone. Yeah, yes, now sir. quickly, quickly I mean, take a... <clears throat> wait, wait, quickly uh, put on the cams, everyone. Ah, Prem Kumar is somewhere there. Good to see. Cool. Kavyaji, Namaskar, Lokesh Chandra. This is okay. the time, they've, they've, all got, they've all gone for their evening meal and just left the sound on. They, they manage everything by themselves very good late in the evening. Daytime, no. Evening, that is the life for them. Yeah, <laughs> I hope Ajay, I'm correct. Their, their night starts at 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> so till then they have night canteen. So many things are there for the hostel. Of course, day scholars, they have to go to bed early. Otherwise, they'll get broomstick. Yeah. Okay, cool. Quickly take a peek. Uh, Dr. Neela Nagarjuna, thank you so much for joining, uh, Professor. Could you just say a few words, Dr. Neela Nagarjuna? Yes. Unmute, Dr. Neela Nagarjuna. Introduce yourself. We can't hear you. He's a, he's a newly joined professor, and we're so good that he had joined the whole session. OK, so where is the order of thanks? Um, where is Rushwet? Rushwet? Where is Rushwet? Where is Rushwet? Where is Rushwet? Where is I don't know, there is some uh, maybe mic problem, but Thank you for joining, uh, Nagarjuna sir. It was nice that you know you came and met. Yeah, anybody wants to propose a word of thanks, quick? Uh, so may I do it? Sure. Please introduce your name. Uh, my name is Rishit, sir. Um, and yes. uh, on uh, behalf of yeah. all the students attending this lecture. Uh, Professor Cheshire, uh, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude for uh, joining us here today. The knowledge and experience you've shared with us is uh, no doubt invaluable, and we will try our best to apply this knowledge to the best of our abilities. Thank you, sir. Sure. Uh, Rishi, thank you so much. What I'll do is I'm just sharing uh, Sir's website, all right, just so that everything, every material, a uh, lot of materials are there. Just go to Google and put Derek Sishaya. You get the first web link there. I'll put it in all your groups. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, so here, what you need to do is you need to come to rethinking, you need to come to blog, 
you need to come to resources. So in resources, sir has kept free. And so many resources are there for students. You can download about it. Can you see there? Creativity, innovation, yes, resources sir. to download and use now. Yes. OK, so I will share this uh, with all of you. Uh, and sir does all this for a lot of industries and kept it on his website for free. So let's take the best use of it and let's hope and pray that sir also come back to India like last two visits and takes courses. It's a wonderful course on creativity innovation. All right, so uh, Derek, thank you so much um, for your time. I hope everything is settling well in UK and uh, see you soon. Uh, see you on Friday there. in fact. Friday we're doing a jam, yeah? Indeed, but don't forget, send me that information. Otherwise, sure. I'll 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 find somebody very very big over in India to go and beat <laughs> you up. Sure, Raj Kumar, sir, over to you. Yeah, saying something. Raj Kumar Mugeshan, sir. Uh, he's hiding. Where's, okay. where's my where's my spiritual guru? He's there, I can see him, but he's trying to speak. So uh, let's see, Derek, if all goes well, uh, we're trying to bring you down and then uh, see if we can take up some courses here also for the ATAP um, students. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I need some real chai. Yes, you will get the real Indian garam yeah. chai. And Rishit will give you Hyderabadi chai. He's from Hyderabad. He'll give you the yeah, and, and Hyderabad Irani chai. I'll make sure it's the best mute. chai you ever had, sir. <laughs> well, I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to give it a go. And Rishit, there is no limit for sir. Chai bolo to bus. First thing chai. <laughs> yeah, chai all the time. All the time chai. Yeah. Yes. See if I can find some more local delicacies. Yeah, yeah. Ajay Kumar mm. will take you to the local I'll, ones. I'll, mm. I'll never I'll never forget the Idli yeah. Samba though, as long as I live. <laughs> Remember our Mahabalipuram trip? Yeah. OK, good. Thank you so much, everyone. Good evening. Have a good evening. We'll catch up and um, let's be creative. Again, I repeat, the creator created you to be creative, not duplicative. I hope this is enough. For the day. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Derek, see you. Bye. Okay. Agar, sir. Sir. Bye. Agarjuna, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Rashid, for taking all the efforts.